Okay, welcome to the Chord Club. And today I'm going to be uh, looking at something different. I'm going to be looking at diminished chords. And often in the Chord Club, I'm looking at a particular, uh, particular way to play one chord, like a way to play a G chord way up high, or something like that. Uh, but today I'm going to talk about diminished chords as a group because they're unusual. And I had um, I had the question from someone in the Chord Club. Uh, asking for uh, some examples and, and how they could use a diminished chord. Um, some songwriters can go their entire life without once using a diminished chord. But it's a cool sound, it's an unusual sound, and uh, just a way to really add some interest to your songs. So I'm going to start out with showing you uh, a few examples, um, a number of different examples, and kind of explain how it's used in the song, and I hope that can spark some ideas uh, on your own. And along the way, I'll show you how to show, how to play these diminished chords also. So first, I'm going to show you probably the most popular song ever that features a diminished chord. I think I can safely say that. And, and it actually it appears in country music. Uh, a lot of people think of diminished chords as appearing only in jazz. And that's where they're most common. But here's a song by Garth Brooks. Let's see if you recognize this opening. <laughs> Friends in low places, of course. Okay, but that second chord is a diminished chord. You've got your standard G to start out with, but then the second one is a diminished chord. It's a G sharp diminished chord before he goes to the A minor. And if you notice the bass in the bass, you go from G, you go from G to G sharp. To A. And diminished chords are really useful for putting, for uh, moving up chromatically like that, moving up, you know, kind of the, the notes in between uh, your key. And a very common thing is to go uh, between, say, a G major and an A minor, where you have a, a whole step between them, or it's two frets on the guitar. Kind of like between uh, C major and D minor is another, uh, another common one. Uh, in between there is a nice, uh, it's a nice place to use a diminished chord. Um, something like this. Uh, there was a kind of a joke song uh, recorded by Jane's Addiction. Um, they called it Thank You Boys and sort of a, a poke at jazz, but they used, they start out with a C. It's actually a C major seventh, which is common in jazz. And then a diminished chord, then a D, D minor, and G sliding down a bit. Yep, so that second chord is a diminished chord, and they're going from C major to a C sharp diminished to a D minor. And it's a nice way just to add kind of a chord in between, in between two other chords. And uh, there's an example that, um, that I sometimes put in in a song where there's a G followed by an A minor, and it's in uh, Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits, if you know that. Just a real classic riff. But, um, but uh, basically in the section right before the chorus where they actually sing Sultans of Swing, um, there's a place where you can throw in a diminished chord for a pretty cool effect. Uh, let me just play what leads up to that, so it's sort of a pre-chorus. And we're into the chorus. So the part at the end. That's an F to a G and then to an A minor when you enter the chorus. So between that G and that A minor, if you throw in a diminished chord, it's a pretty cool effect. So you've got uh, the vocal melody is, we are the Sultans. The Sultans of Swing. And over that, so instead of diminished chord instead. So instead of playing it over G major to take you to the A minor, you can play a G sharp diminished chord instead. 
the difference though. Or your melody works over both things, but throwing in that that basically different bass note just adds a nice interest. Again, I'll play it. Resolved, so it really wants to go to the next chord. It resolves to the A minor. So anytime, again, where you have like a G followed by an A minor, or a C followed by a D minor, um, D followed by E minor, and where you have that uh, a major chord, and then a whole step up, two frets up, you've got a minor chord. Try throwing a diminished chord in between there. And uh, one interesting thing about diminished chords is that um, there's only a small handful of ways um, to play them, much fewer than other chords. And the reason for that is that if you learn uh, this way of playing it, like this, that there is a, is a G sharp diminished. If you slide up, that's exactly the same. Uh, this, this G sharp diminished could also be called a B diminished, or a D diminished, or an F diminished. There's four notes, and there, if you slide that up uh, a minor third, slide it up three frets, it has the same, it has the same properties. The same four notes are just rearranged. So if you ask for a, for a G-sharp diminished chord, you could play any, any of these just by sliding around three frets like that. Um, in the middle, if you're playing that... Uh, like that Jane's Addiction song where we've got the C major 7 followed by the diminished chord. This right here, you can also slide that up a minor third. And it's just the same three notes, or the same four notes rather, rearranged. So, so if you know that basic one, like that, that's a G sharp diminished there. Or this, C sharp diminished. Uh, maybe this. this is a D diminished, same as F or A or A flat, or B. If you know those three and you can play a diminished chord pretty much anywhere. So that's sort of how to play the chords. Um, oh, another example uh, is the Beatles' Till There Was You, and it's very similar to Friends in Low Places, actually. It starts with the same chord, a G. Once again, it's you've got a G major to an A minor, but in between they throw this G sharp diminished chord. Okay, so it's a cool sound, and it's it's a nice way to throw in something that sounds a little jazzy too. For sure, it just makes it jazzy instead of going from you know G to A minor, the G G sharp diminished to A minor like that it makes it gives it a jazzy feel. There are some other ways to use diminished chords too uh, that aren't necessarily in between those two chords like that. Uh, there's a great riff by Stone Temple Pilots, uh, Interstate Love Song. There's a great riff there. And the, uh, the verse of it is pretty interesting also. to the A to the E. It's a B flat diminished chord, then resolves to an A, and then an E major. And by the time you get to that A, you are really ready for it. You know, after going through these chords. It's really a resolution. So what they're doing is they're just walking down a bass note chromatically. The first chord is a it's a it's a C sharp minor. Then they're going to this chord, which is basically just um, it's basically an A flat major over a C. And this chord, which is really just a C sharp major chord, a C sharp seven, but with the seven in the bass, the B in the bass, and then your B flat diminished. 
That's a lot of chords, I know. Um, but the interesting thing here maybe to pick up on is that if you have something where it's like an E to an A major, throwing in that A flat diminished resolves so nicely to the A. So sometime where you have an A chord, maybe try throwing in a B flat diminished chord right before it. Maybe something to try. Another song, uh, which is uh, another massive pop hit that had a diminished chord in it, that uses it in a similar way to that, is uh, um, All Star by Smash Mouth. Uh, it was really big maybe 10, 15 years ago, something like that. Uh, but in the chorus, you've got a big, fat, diminished chord, so it goes... You probably recognize that. So the first chord, just the E major, then e, A major, then that B flat diminished chord. I'm playing with crunchy guitars, you know, you get the, definitely get the effect of it. melody stays the same over those three chords. So that melody still works. The melody that works over the major chords works, works fine over the diminished chord also. So that's just an example of how to use that uh, with, you know, in kind of a rock context where normally you might expect to hear E to A to B, back to A to E. Instead they threw in that. interesting. It's a pretty interesting way to, um, to get some, some cool harmony in there. So try playing with that on your own too. Um, try throwing one of those in, maybe, if you have a pretty standard sounding like E major to A major kind of chord, like that. Right, this is kind of an introduction to minish chords. I hope it gives you um, at least the sense that it's a, it's a chord that can be used in a very useful way uh, in pop music, even in really rocking stuff. It takes experimentation. There's not a lot of rules around it, but it definitely works well in between, in between a couple of chords. Um, later this week, I'll shoot another video where I have uh, some more examples where it shows up in pop music. But hit me up with any questions. Um, again, this is a pretty unusual chord, but I'd love to hear any questions you might have, and I will do my best to answer them. All right, thanks for watching.